Well, with me here in the studio now is uh, Poster Supremo, I suppose we call you, Frank Luntz. Frank, thanks for joining us here on BBC News. Not much of a surprise for many of the results tonight. What's your takeaway from what you've seen? Let's put this election to bed. It is Donald Trump. It is Joe Biden. 70% of Americans are upset that we have to have 2020 run again. They look at this as being more of the same and they're fed up with it. The public is looking for in order results, accountability, and hope for the future. And they look at both candidates and they have real problems. Now make no mistake, Donald Trump is and has the greatest intensity of any candidate I've ever seen. You either love him or hate him. And in Joe Biden's case, every week he gets weaker and weaker as more and more people decide that he's too old but this is who it's gonna be and God help us. I just actually, when you're saying there about the difference between the two candidates, if we look at how they marked their victories tonight, we saw Donald Trump take to the stage in Mar-a-Lago, free-flowing Donald Trump, trotting out his classic lines, hitting all the things his base wants to hear. And we just got a written statement from Joe Biden. What are the optics of that? Get used to it because Joe Biden doesn't have the ability to run a full campaign. He's going to use a Rose Garden strategy. He's going to stay at home. But when you do that, you still have to meet with the press. You still have to give people the chance to, to hear you and to get at you. And as this campaign goes forward, it's going to become more and more difficult for him to do it. I wonder whether he's going to participate in the debates. Every speech that he gives, such as State of the Union coming up on Thursday, becomes potentially cataclysmic. And the American people say, how can this have happened? 340 million Americans, why are these two people our nominees? When you're facing criticism about your age and your physical abilities, and some have questioned his mental abilities as well, why would you just do a written statement tonight of all nights at Super Tuesday? There's so many delegates that he has put in his basket now. He should be speaking but you're not going to speak if you're nervous. And the last time he did a press conference, he confused, what was it, Egypt and uh, Mexico. He's got the notes, he's got the note cards actually written in front of him and he's still making mistakes. Well, on, on that night, Donald Trump also mixed up the presidents of Turkey and Hungary, just to, to say that was on the same yeah, night. Yes, but that, that's the whole issue. Why are we running people who are clearly past their prime? I know that the British audiences are looking at this saying we're nuts, we're crazy. And I actually have to acknowledge as an Oxford graduate, as someone who's lived in Britain off and on for the last 30 years, they're right. Well, as the Supreme Court, Court declared yesterday, it's up to the people in Congress to decide who's on ballot. So is that not the answer to your question there? Every time they attack Donald Trump, he gets stronger. Every indictment, his numbers went up. Every time he got kicked off the ballot, his numbers go up. The thing that I say to the Democrats, if you dislike Donald Trump so much, why are you so pathetic in your opposition to him? They don't know what to say. They don't know how to do it. They're so breathless in their, in their hate of him that they're making him stronger and stronger every time. And make no mistake, this is not a nationwide election. It's Georgia, Arizona, Nevada, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin. I can go through all the key states. There are nine of them. And there's only about 5% who can be moved. So just 2% of America is going to decide our president. And they're doing such a bad job of, of challenging Trump at this point. What are the issues as you see it that might shift the dial? And bearing in mind, we are, as you've said, they're talking about a small number of voters in a small number of states. The biggest issue right now is still inflation, although I call it affordability, because no human being actually says, oh my God, look at that inflation. It's costs, it's prices, it's, it's food and fuel, housing and health care. The second issue is immigration, like the package you just showed. And in the end, the public wants safe and secure borders. They want legal immigration. They believe we are a nation of immigrants and a nation of laws. And they don't see that from Joe Biden. And then the third issue, which is the one sleeper issue for the Democrats, but it's not sleeper, it's abortion. So Republicans benefit on immigration and inflation and Democrats benefit on abortion. Just one question on Nikki Haley. Uh, she's likely to win Vermont as the current projection so, as it stands. So, 
I don't even know that half the British people know where Vermont is. I keep confusing it with New Hampshire. I go up there with my pail for maple syrup and they tell me you're in the wrong state. So she won Vermont, what's the big deal? She ran a good campaign. She's a great candidate. She's gonna be a front runner in, in 2028, but she's no longer relevant in 2024. Do you expect her to pull out or do you expect her to say something like, look what happens in an open primary where Republicans, Democrats and independents get to vote for me as opposed to a closed primary where it's only Republicans? You guys have to tell me whether you like this or not. If a tree falls in the forest and no one's there, does it even matter if it made a sound? What she says is not relevant. What Donald Trump says is very relevant and we should pay attention to what he says and how he says it because he is the Republican nominee as of tonight Joe Biden's a Democratic nominee, and all across America, millions of people are going, what the hell? Well, when Frank's talking about you guys, he's, of course, talking about our fabulous panel here, Rodney Davis, former Illinois congressman for the Republican Party, and Stephanie Murphy, former Florida uh, Democratic congresswoman. Answer Frank's question there. What do you think? Actually, the question is, what the hell? <laughs> so, <laughs> it's, it's really what we said earlier. Um, so what? She won Vermont. That's the biggest surprise of tonight. Um, but it really doesn't mean anything. And you look ahead. I think you're right, Frank. She may have a future, but right now the future is not 2024. And she's got to make a tough decision to decide whether or not to stay in this race. And as I said, panels before, and I would argue too, tonight's not the beginning of Trump v. Biden. That was after Iowa. That was after New Hampshire. Here we are today really just putting the cherry on top. I actually think the biggest surprise for me tonight was that the president didn't come out and address the nation on Super Tuesday. And he put a carefully crafted statement that was written by his staff out. And you can run a campaign from your basement when COVID is all across this country. You cannot run a campaign uh, hidden away. And so on Thursday, we'll have an opportunity to see whether or not he can read from a teleprompter in a way that <laughs> makes him seem competent. And if he can make any of those moments like he did in the last State of the Union in response, you know, kind of live to the feedback that he's getting from Republicans. And actually, quite honestly, he may be getting feedback from Democrats that um, isn't uh, to his liking, especially on this Israel-Hamas issue. Well, just before we go further on that, let's make it official. CBS News can project Vermont <laughs> is has been won by Nikki Haley. <laughs> oh, boy. So there we go. It's official. Um, an interesting point we were discussing earlier, Frank, is, you know, how the top of the ticket energizes everybody else down the ballot. And of course, it's going to be very tricky for the Democrats to hold on to the Senate or to try and flip the House. Republicans have an easier time of things. How does the Trump and Biden top ticket filter down? It's a very wise question, because I think Republicans actually have the advantage in the Senate. The two states that they need to flip it were overwhelmingly Donald Trump. So him being on the top of the ticket, West Virginia, Montana, makes it likely that the GOP wins the Senate and they've, not, they've got no seats that are really up for grabs. On the House side, the chaos is not good for the GOP. And if you ask me to bet on it right now, I think the Democrats win the House because the public is so hostile to the status quo. They don't just want change. They really, in a word, enough, all caps, exclamation point. I know the Brits call it something different, but they're screaming, I don't want any of this anymore. And that hurts the Republicans in the House, hurts the Democrats in the Senate, and we may have a very strong change election in November. What do you think, Rodney? You've been watching a few key primary races today as well. I think uh, what we're seeing at the presidential level is, is trending down to congressional races right now. It doesn't look good for my friend Jerry Carl in Alabama who's running an incumbent versus incumbent race against Barry Moore, a Freedom Caucus, uh, Freedom Caucus member and far right uh, member of Congress who is supported by groups like the Club for Growth and other organizations. So I think it's indicative of what Frank is saying where America is right now. Where we are is going to be over the next few months during this presidential election, I think amplified. And the voters are going to have to decide are they, going to, are they going to view America in those stark contrasts? Or are we going to start to get back to talking about issues that are a little less 
contrasting and a little more uh, a, a little more optimistic unlike Frank here the Oxford grad <laughs> By the Stephanie way, you just made my mom very proud <laughs> Well, we like to make moms proud on this show. Um, Stephanie, what, what, what do you think when Joe Biden's going to be at the top of the ticket for your party? Is he going to energize down the ballot? Will people stick Democrat the whole way down? I think right now it's hard to see him energizing uh, the base. And we really need the base. And the base is young voters. And we're, his poll numbers with young voters are atrocious. And that's bad for him, not just at the polls, but in the run up to Election Day. We rely on young voters to get out the vote, to basically run our field operations. We, we rely on that energy to actually get other people out to vote and, and run campaigns. And without that enthusiasm in that group, we're not going to have the workforce, basically, to run a really effective campaign. And I know you've got a question, but I do want to say this, because this is being seen by Brits, and it's very early in the morning there. And all around the world. Uh, this is a lesson for the rest of the world. Don't let your politics become as polarized, as toxic as America that right now we can't even hear the other side. We don't want to. We don't want to listen anymore. We simply want to yell. And I know I've got uh, West Point cadets that are behind these cameras. We have a responsibility to ensure that our democracy is passed to the next generation. And it's not a game. We're not Republican and Democrat. We are Americans or Brits or whoever. And I just hope that your election isn't as damaging as ours. Yours is coming up probably in October. Learn from us that if you demonize and dehumanize your opponents, you will destroy that beautiful gift that democracy is. Don't play that game, because it will only destroy your country. In the interest of actually, I would just say that I'm Irish, but we do have an election in Ireland <laughs> within the next the 12 same, months yeah. as do well. The same thing with well, I, I agree with Frank that it's going to be a change election. You can't have 65% or 70% of the electorate who is, thinks the country is headed in the wrong direction and not see a change election. But it's going to be narrowly held. And when elections are narrowly won, it opens up the room for contesting the outcome. And I think that's a danger that we, we may face this fall. Can I ask Frank a quick question? Su super brief. We have seconds left on Do the show. Do you believe the low propensity Trump voter that came out in 2020 and 2016 and helped Republicans quick, 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 in quick. House races? Do you think they're going to come out again? Everyone's going to vote. Every human being who can walk, drive, jog, whatever is going to vote in 2024. Okay, so we saw... That helps Republicans in the House. Okay, we saw a record turnout in 2020. We're going to beat it in 2024. You heard it here first from Frank Luntz. We have to leave it there for now. Frank Luntz, thank you very much. Rodney Davis and also Stephanie Murphy, thanks for being with us. To you at home, thanks indeed for watching us. And from all the team here, we'll see you soon. Take care. Stay on BBC News.